Part 2. Math Hoffa Sirius Jones, RBE. August 31st. Music Room. Atlanta, 4th Ward. We covered two battles so far. A battle that never happened, like I said, was Ill Will and T-Rex. T-Rex has uh, promised to make it up to, R to ARP and to RBE. He said he's sick to his stomach that he wasn't physically able to make it. And for the culture, ARP took care of him. He's going to take care of ARP as far as honoring that battle or a big time battle in the future. And I respect that. I'm still getting over this cold. Part itself. Let's jump into uh Oops and Emerson Kennedy. Let's let's get into that. Two battle rappers I respect personally. I gave them both, they both gave me interviews before and after the venue. After the battle. Emerson Kennedy is a cat you really have to listen to. He, I think he has better playback value on video after a battle than you would actually um, be able to appreciate in person on stage or as a fan watching live. I say that because I say this. Emerson Kennedy has bars that you can't possibly catch the first time. He's an intricate dude. He's different. His style is different. His vibe is different. He's just a different MC altogether. It's like anyone who enjoys true lyricism and having to think and process lyrics will enjoy Emerson Kennedy and you will enjoy, you will enjoy the, uh, the tra trajectory that his career is having lately. He's been he's been rhyming for a while, but he he's just from a you know he's just a cat from an area where battle rap is not prevalent at all. I believe it's Salt Lake City, Utah. And with that being said, he came a long way, not just physically and geographically, but within his career, he's come a long way. The, the brother's making moves, and I say that to say this: damn it, anyone else that he's faced in the past. The material he came with, he would have took him out. It would have been a 3-0, maybe a 2-1 at, at worst. But he met his match. He met his match on this day. He ran into oops. Social activists in his community, St. Louis, Missouri. He's a politician, street soldier, all the above. Oops is a special type of individual, man. And a brother can really... Really bring it lyrically. He's got the energy. He's got the track record. And he's not finished. From interviewing Oops. I've realized that he wants to take his. Battle rap career to a. To a higher level by battling elite MCs. He wants all the smoke with Mav Hoffa. He's calling out all the big names. And he wants him within the next year, within 2020. So he's not taking any light battles. And I'm not calling Emerson Kennedy light by any stretch of the imagination. But he wants higher tier matches on any stage, any side stage, any battle league. And he's ready for it. And I believe he's ready for it. I believe in Oops. I'm giving Oops the 2-1. Oops third round was just... Magnificent. I love the second round on Emerson Kennedy. I love all three rounds of Emerson Kennedy. I like Emerson Kennedy's second round. And I'm willing to give Emerson Kennedy that second round over Oops, who also came with it. I'm going to edge Oops in the first. Oops got the third. Oh, Oops got the third. And I think that's what won him to battle. And speaking of Emerson Kennedy, he's very humble. And he, him and Oops, they stated something to me. It was pretty similar, even though I interviewed them hours apart. They both, and they talk to each other too. They respect each other as men and as a competition. They both agree that you don't have to be murderous, playing like you a killer, street street thug, or any anything of that nature to get more views, to get more fans, to uh, 
for battle rappers to believe what you spitting. Them brothers right there, they got enough lyrical content and strength within their the professionalism and their their wordplay where they don't need all the theatrics. They just come in with the performance and the material. Well written material and they thrive off of that. And that, that's what made it a great battle. I think if those two brothers have met two years later in their career, that would have been a classic. Their names aren't up yet to the level that it could be. Not to be long-winded, it was a very good battle. It was very good to watch on film. It was good live in the house. It was great on stage. And it was and it was very needed at that time. Because that we all knew T-Rex and Ill Will was canceled. So there was a lot of a lot of people pretty upset, you know what I mean, for the money they spent and the time that they put out going to this event. And the, the battle started pretty late too, like most battle rap leagues is beyond their control. But the battle started late, so a lot of people were really looking forward to Ill Will and T-Rex in the house. I know that. And when they found out that it, that wasn't going to happen, we really needed something to, you know, bring up our spirits. And that, that, that battle did it. That battle got everyone motivated. So I'm giving it 2-1, like I said. Oops over Emerson Kennedy. I don't think it was a, uh, it was debatable, and it definitely wasn't a 3-0 by any stretch of the imagination. Oops 2-1. Let's move on to, uh, let's wave several, no, nah, no, nah, you know what? No, 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 we'll save that. I like this battle. Rosenberg Raw, Craig Lamar. Rosenberg Raw came down the street outside the venue. It was like a scene from the Chappelle show when Dave talks about uh, the aura he's seen around Prince. I saw this this beige, yellow, it was like it's like a light-skinned aura coming down the street, coming down Edgewood Ave in the Fourth Ward. It was like Rosenberg Raw and his brother and his light-skinned entourage of of men just came down the street and they was like storming down the street like it was time to like it was time to fight like they was about to get in a brawl like man it looked like it was about to be a war it was like a scene from Beat Street not Beat Street uh uh Beat It Michael Jackson Beat It video Beat It now he was coming down the street the brother looked serious and, and it's ironic when he got to the door ARP happened to be coming out he greeted ARP they said something in each other's ear Look like they handled, you know, whatever verbal business they had to handle. It was all daps. Swave Sever came outside. He dapped up Swave. You know what I'm saying? And um, he gave the battle rap media. They dap. He didn't have time to interview. He just went downstairs into the venue. His, I guess his brother, his light-skinned brother, was like his publicist. He's talking to the big wigs, the important people. They go downstairs. And there wasn't no time to waste. He wanted to get on stage then. Craig Lamar physically looked ready. He looked relaxed. Had a nice first round. Craig Lamar had a nice first round. But then Rosenberg Raw. He delivered. Rosenberg. I mean he looked the way he. Man the way he came out in the first round. He sounded like. An elite battle rapper. You laugh at me, I'm telling you. That brother sound like he was ready for anybody that day. Anybody. And he been gone for over two years from the battle rap scene. So he didn't come back shabby. He didn't come back choking. None of that. That brother was smoking. You hear me? Raw. I was already a Raw fan. You know what I mean? He was always like the underdog that I wanted to see excel in the battle rap game. When he stopped battle rapping, I'm like, oh man. You know what I mean? I thought he had talent. I thought it was talent wasted. Like they say in the Bronx Tale. You know, you know I'm going with that. But Raw came with that first round. I edged it Raw over Lamar because of the energy that he brought. And everybody wanted to see. He was definitely the crowd favorite. But I'm like, okay, it's going to be a fight. Second round, Craig Lamar sound all right. Then he stumbled. Then he was like, oh, damn. Oh, shit. Getting on his own self. You know what I mean? He was, he was like his worst critic. Throwing the choke. And it didn't look good. It didn't look good at all. Yeah, I know it looked bad on film. It looked terrible in the house. 
I didn't think he recovered from that stumble. And he was fooled after that. I'm talking about Rosenberg Raw came back. I believe it was the bottom of the second. He killed them. Oh my God. He just. He bombed on it, man. The lips. He came ready. He came ready. He tore him up, man. It was nothing nice, man. It wasn't nothing personal towards Craig Lamar, but he had to disrespect him. He was just the man in line to take that ass whooping verbally. He took it. Third round, more of the same. Craig Lamar choked up again. Oh, man. It, it, it didn't look good. It, the moment was too big for him. I talked to him afterwards. I asked I asked Craig Lamar, was the moment too big for you, or did you stack your battles too tight? Did you have something else down the line or, 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 or presently that you, another another venture that you took on too soon during the same time as the battle? He admitted, he said, yeah, within 14 days, he's got a, another battle. I don't know, did he say Av? Somebody, somebody of a higher tier than him. He said he had... A battle lined up that was more important to him, as he says, and he's never t taken two battles this close. He usually has two, three months to prepare for a battle, and he's been off the scene for a while, so he really wanted to do well. He really wanted to excel and do well in this battle versus Rosenberg Raw, who also, you know what I mean, has been off the scene for a while. He said he was just so frustrated and mad at himself. He's used to s smaller venues like barbershops and, you know, corner stores and just, you know, ciphers, you know, where you on a flat floor. He's not used to being on the stage and looking down on, you know, on viewers, on ongoers that, you know, came to see the battle rap event. The fans are usually with him. You know what I'm saying? In small, tight circles. The camera is in a small, tight, enclosed, impact, you know, packed in circle, cipher. So he's not used to that, basically. The man admitted to me that he can't handle the big stage right now. And that's something he's got to work on. And I respect that. I respect that out of that brother. He was honest. He was humble. And he's very disappointed in himself. And he gave all props and all respect due to Rosenberg Raw. Who came in that bottom of that third and destroyed him. I'm talking about Rosenberg Raw. It was nasty, bro. And sister, whoever watching this broadcast. Rosenberg Raw 30, it was a dirty 30. It was a nasty 30. As Cortez would say, he destroyed him. Yeah, that was that was the 3-0 of the night. Easily. Easily. It's nasty. No disrespect to Craig Lamar. I like the brother now, and I hope you do well in your next battle. Hope you win your next battle. But bro, don't never take no battles this close. I think only the elite rappers can pull that off, man. Or, or rappers. Battle rappers that got at least 30, 40 battles under their belt on video. I don't know how many Craig Lamar has. I know he has quite a few, but any battle rapper will tell you you just don't you don't take battles 14 days apart unless you know you can handle it. You know what I mean? Don't do that again. Don't chase that bag, bro. I respect you though, man. Hope to see you again soon. I'm saying or even on the bigger stage. You know, do what you gotta do to prepare for that. But yeah, that was a 30. Nasty, dirty, dirty. Let's move on. Let's move on. We going to um Want to do Jay, Jay Murder? Young Cannon? Team Homie? Versus Cave Gang? We doing that? What we doing right now? We doing it? Pittsburgh still is big. Stay away to seven. But back on the subject, Jay Murder. Young Cannon came ready for Jay Murder. Young Cannon had them bars. They was rapid fire. Back to back. He said some shit. The average young cannon performance. He gave you the energy you like. You know what I mean? He got. He, he had the. I mean, against the average opponent, he'd have got him. He'd have got him in them three rounds. He didn't stumble. It was smooth. All three rounds. First round, I really liked the first round. I could almost give him the first. The first round, I'm going to call it debatable. Jay Murder said it's an easy 30. I talked to Jay Murder. He said it was a 30. And he got the right to say that. I think that first round was questionable. I think Jay Murder came with it. I think Young Cannon was just as strong. It was a battle. It was, To me, it was a battle. Going into the second round, Young Cannon wasn't shabby, but Jay Murder came with it in the second round. You hear me? 
Jay Murder came with it in the second round, and Team Homie was behind him. I'm saying you got Sway behind him, Ike, um, uh, Poison Pen. He had his entourage. He had the back. I think there's only one other person from Cave Gang that was with Young Cannon, and it. Was, and I believe what bad news. That was it. He had bad news on his side. He he came dolo. I think he was with his lady. You know what I'm saying? He came humble, came dolo. It wasn't enough. Murder had to. It wasn't. They wasn't gassing murder. Murder just had it. He had the crowd in the second round. The, the, the momentum was going towards murder in the second round. Jay Murder had it. Cannon came out with his third. It was a good third. But something tell me Jay Murder had something up his sleeve. He always got something up his sleeve for the third. Let me tell you. I'm, I'm going to try to look in the camera if you have not seen this battle. When I tell you Jay Murder, Jay Murder murdered that man in the third. His angle was he has visual camera proof that Young Cannon been running around with a transsexual or a tranny transformer transformer Cannon denied it you can see it on his face. He knew it was propaganda. Then Jay Murder goes to the phone evidence. Whips out his iPhone. He got visual proof of them two hugged up. Or posted up taking a picture. I ain't going to say hugged up. I don't, I don't want Cave Gang jumping on me. You know what I mean? I like Cave Gang. We got a good report. He had the pictures. Listen to me, Jay Murder had the receipts. I don't know if it's a man. I don't know if it's a woman. I really don't want to know. Maybe it's just a fan taking the picture. But he's led to believe, or at least he expressed in his lyrics, Jay Murder did, that Young Cannon has been with this individual on numerous occasions, he even spent a night in a hotel, he even took that individual to different events where Young Cannon was performing in the past. I don't know how true that is. I don't know if it's a lie, it's fabricated. I don't know if it's just just for TV. I don't know what it is. But he seemed to have proof. He showed it to the cameraman. He showed it to us on stage. He showed the receipts to the fans. Cannon, he stayed strong on the square about it's made up. Ain't got nothing to do with me. One way or another, it took the momentum away from Cannon and totally put the momentum on Murder. And Murder basically, this is the funny part right here. No bullshit. Murder, he was basically telling him, paraphrasing, I'm paraphrasing right now. If you like trannies and you go that way, own it accept it and just be real about it you still nice on the mic pause you know what I'm saying you still yo you still a a, a a very well respected battle rapper and you great at your craft that's what Jay Murder was saying but you'll be more respected if you just if we if you accept it and just that's the way you go man everyone will accept you one way or another I think I think that's the point he was trying to make and right on cue, there was this moist dude. I want to be nice. This known in the battle rap community. He's, he's out the closet. Out the closet dude was like, yes, preach it, honey. <laughs> Whatever he said. He said something close to that. Yo, we busted out laugh on the stage. This dude, this dude was like agreeing with Jay Murder. Like, yeah, let it go. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Talk about it. You know what I mean? Let's talk. What are we talking about here? So... Yo, when I tell you Poison Pen was to the side of me, rolling, my man, I've known Poison Pen for 27 years, bro. Poison Pen was rolling. Him and Sway was screaming. The whole team, homie, was laughing. People on the stage was laughing. People, the fans, you know what I'm saying, in the crowd, they was rolling. The dude was just trolling. Trolling against Young Cannon. Like, yo, just accept it. I know, I know our type, you know what I mean? Oh, man, Young Cannon look embarrassed, man. But he, he ate that. Pause. He ate that 
And uh, Jay Murder just kept pushing the point, you know what I mean? Like, let it go, man. If that's the way you go, that's the way you go. And uh, that, that angle right there solidified the win. It solidified the battle. That was it. So, and what the cops say, nothing more to see here. Clear the area. That was it, bro. At least a 2-1 Jay Murder. Maybe a 30. I, I say a 2-1. I'm going to be nice and say it too. And I like Cannon. I like what he brought. He didn't have any weak rounds. He didn't stumble. He was smooth. But Jay Murder was just better that day. That was Jay Murder's day right there. Murder stepping it up. He was already up there. He really stepping it up, man. He a, a RBE hitter. You know what I'm saying? But um, he's a hit man. Most definitely for RBE. And they, they should be, feel lucky to have him. I like Murder. That's my man right there. Light skin nation all day. My man Murder. All right. So I gave it 2-1 Jay Murder. I gave it 2-1, um, oops, over Emerson Kennedy, T-Rex, T-Rex and ill will never happen, Trey Dennis over Mr. Mills, let's go with bad news, Swave 7, Cave Gang, Team Homie, I like this because news, he's great in Atlanta, he's, he's like the hitter on Bullpen Battle League. He's like the flagship battle rap MC in that league. He's like John John the Don's hitman. That's his, you know, that's his shooter. He's on another league. He's on RBE. It's supposed to be a whole different animal, right? Nah. Bad news come with the same aggression. He come with the same performance. He got that chip on his shoulder. Knock it off. News was ready. He's not. He was not going to be bullied by Team Homie, although they tried it. They tried him. He was not going to be bullied. He's not going to be taken off his square. He's not going to be pushed around by Swave Severn. He was ready. But Swave is the veteran. Tell me who Swave didn't battle. Swave, I remember Swave from... The freestyle ciphers, you know, strongholding them back in, you know what I mean, in Manhattan and them, them parks and Rocksteady Crew anniversary, you know what I mean, uh, 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 throwdowns and stuff. Them dudes out there, they was on Eddie Ill and DL mixtapes back in the day. I remember them from 20, more than 20 years back, man. Sway's been around doing this forever. Don't let them fool you. That man is seasoned, you hear me? This whole crew is seasoned. They sit, they all killers, man. You call them old dudes, I call them seasoned killers. They trying to be nice and not take out the whole industry. Nah, that's just my personal feeling. Them brothers is nice. Point is, Swave is a veteran, and he knows how to edge an opponent with, I would say, less experience on different leagues and on different stages. Bad News is ascending as a battle rapper. He's not. I, he'll he'll tell you he's not where he wants to be yet. But that brother is. He can go against anybody. Bad news ain't never gonna give you a bad battle. He don't. He's not the type to stumble. He he can battle a lot within the course of a year, and battle anybody, and still give you a hell of a show. Very good lyricist, man. He don't try to portray himself as a tough guy, but at the same time, you're not pushing bad news around. That shit ain't gonna work. It's not going to work. It didn't work for Sway. You know what worked for Sway? Just having a better all-around performance two out of three rounds. I'm giving uh, News one of the rounds. I get, You know, I'm going to give News the third. I'm going to give Sway the first two. I'm going to give Sway the first two. He had the crowd. And... he, You know, you know how Sway do. He, he's stern about his. You know what I mean? His lyrics hit. They hit. His bars hit. Not saying news didn't, but he had news the first two rounds. But if it was, I think news just started late. You know what I mean? News had him in the third. News basically said, I'm a man at the end. You know what I mean? Like, I take care of mine. I'm a father. I'm a real man. You know what I mean? You're not pushing me around. You're not going to bully me. You know what I mean? He gave you a piece of his life. You know what I mean? What he been through. And uh, it kind of uh, gave you a more personal feel. You know, outside the rah-rah lyrics. You know, and, and the bravado and the, that type of persona like a lot of 
bad boy type rappers, you know, battle rappers try to bring to the stage. Now this brother gave you a piece of him, man. I respect that. Now I always respected Bad News as an MC and as a battle rapper. But um, I'm giving Bad News the third, but I don't think it was debatable enough to go either way. I'm going to give that to Swave 7. But um, it was not a bad, like, 7 out of 10 rappers that wasn't elite. I'm say 8 out of 10 with the, the performance Bad News had would have took them out. But not on this day, not the Swave 72 experience. He knew, I won't say dismantle him, but he knew how to win the battle. A win is a win. Swave got through with a 2-1. It was no 3-0, wasn't no... He might be Team Homie, but it wasn't a Homie, is all I'm saying. Damn good battle. Everyone enjoyed it. Let's get to why you all clicked on. It's no clickbait. We talk, what are we doing here? We talking Matt Hoffa, Sirius Jones 3, the third installation of this epic matchup between two heavyweight elite epic historical MCs that have been around for two decades. No punches thrown. Peaceful battle, but at the same time high energy coming to the stage. A lot of mystique behind it. A lot of worry, risk, and all other words that I can throw towards it to explain it. Before the battle started, it felt like many Hollywood. It was like a lot of people just start popping up at the event, the previous battle on the card, to get a good bird's eye view of this math serious matchup. Yo, Cassidy came out of nowhere. Like, that Cassidy, son. My man Cass from my hometown, Philly. I live in Atlanta. He lives in Atlanta now. Right before the battle, before Cassidy came to the stage, I went to the side the stage. We we chopped it up for a while. He told me I need to be in Philly. If I'm repping Philly, I need to be in the hometown. We need to both go back there and check this video. I mean, check this battle out on October 6th. He got the Arsenal. At the time, he's like, you're going to find out who else I already know is Arsenal Cass. It is what it is. He was like, yo. He said, you want to be there. He said, it's a nice card. He said, but I'm going to make things right. So I'm going to body Arsenal. So you going to body him? He said, I'm going to body him, son. I'm like, all right. All right. So, you know, I'm going to get out there. Check my mans out. Cash show love. Shout out, Cass. But uh, he was like a thief in the night. He was there, stepped on stage before the battle. As the battle happened, he left stage. He watched it disappear. Killer Mike came up there. Killer Mike watched from the front of the stage. He gave everybody a pound on the stage, the battles and everything. Um, some politician was there. And this other guy looked recognizable, but I didn't know who he was. I saw ARP um, ask John John and Don, who was on the stage, who the fellow was. You know what I mean? I believe he was like a UFC fighter or a boxer or something. Uh, dark skin dude, strong features. He was just staring at the at the stage, like intently watching. Like these people really in the battle rap, they support the culture and um, you know, it was very respected that they dropped through and show love, you know what I mean? Show support and show love. So big ups to all them, you know, everybody that came to the event from you know the entertainment world, sports world, and uh other elite battle rappers that weren't on the card that came to support, you know what I mean? It's very appreciated. The culture loves you for that. So anyway, serious Jones into the stage first. <clears throat> Jones, <clears throat> he was ready. Look, it had the feel of a boxing match, like a top ranked boxing match. You know, Sirius is on the stage, you know what I mean? Flexing his shoulders like he's ready to get into it. Then it got kind of weird, like the energy got a little awkward because, like, five to ten minutes, Sirius is ready to go now. He's mic'd up. Everyone's like, Where's Matt? You know, so I'm starting to troll Sirius. I'm like, yo, Jones. He looked at me like, well, you know, what light skin want? What light skin you want? You know what I mean? So I was like, yo, Jones, where your man's at? He said, my man. I'm like, your opponent, where your opponent? He was like, Psh. 